Hare Krishna. We very sincerely welcome everyone to Sri Sri Radha Gopinath's Sunday festival. Today is a very holy day. It is the Rasa Yatra of Lord Sri Balaramji that he performs on bank of Yamuna in a place in Vrindavan that is worshipped as Ramkat. Lord Sri Balaramji came from Dwarka on his chariot for the purpose of trying to revive the hearts of the Brijabhasis who were suffering for so many years in separation from Lord Krishna. He was greeted by Nanda and Yashoda who were constantly asking him about the welfare of all the yadus and especially Krishna. And Balaramji also met with the gopas, his old friends, to also try to restore their hearts by, disc by telling the pastimes of Krishna. He met with the gopis and for a long time seeing the intense love and separation that they were feeling, Lord Balaramji glorified their loving relations with Krishna. And then every night for two months with his own set of gopis, he performed the rasa dance on bank of Yamuna. And Varuni, the daughter of Varuna, appeared in the hollows of Kadamba trees in the form of an ambrosial nectarine drink, just to give Balaramji and his consorts more happiness. And they all took that Varuni beverage. Balaramji, in the ecstasy of love, exchanged with his devotees. His eyes seemed to be rolling. And he demanded Yamuna to change her course, to flow where he was dancing with gopis. Well, Yamuna did not take such a request seriously because who requests a river to change her course? All he has to do is walk a few steps and she's right there. So Balaram picked up his plow. You wretched river, you dare to defy my order? I will slash you into so many little streams, hundreds of streams. And he took his plow and started to do. And then Kalindi, the personification of Yamuna, appeared before him with folded hands and glorified his supreme position and surrendered to him. Balaram was happy and played with his gopis in Yamuna. And when he came out, the goddess Kanti, goddess of fortune, had garland and dry garments. In this way, the Rasa Lila of Balaram was performed. 
Vrindavan Das Thakur, as he begins Chaitanya Bhagavat, he tells the story to show who is Lord Nityananda Prabhu. Lord Nityananda Prabhu is Balaram himself. Just as Lord Balaram performs every type of role to serve his brother Krishna, similarly did Nityananda Prabhu, as did Lakshmana in the Leela of Sri Ramachandra. So this day is especially honored and worshipped by Gaudiya Vaishnavas. And for your pleasure, we will be having a special festival this evening in honor of Lord Balaram's Ras Leela. The evening darshan will be specially arranged. It may go later than usual. In fact, it will definitely go later than usual. If you can be here by 8.30, and maybe some kata and a lot of kirtan and beautiful darshan in honor of Sri Balaramji. It is also a day when we honor the great Shamananda Goswami, one of the most empowered and important of the acharyas in our disciplic succession. Shamananda Goswami or Shamananda Pandit was a disciple of Hridai Chaitanya in Ambika Kalna, in Orissa, who was personally sent by his Gurudev to be trained and educated in the deepest siddhanta and culture of Lord Chaitanya's teachings by Srila Jiva Goswami. the nephew of Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami, and who at that time was the principal of Achar Acharya of all the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Shamananda Pandit was classmates at the Radha Damodar temple under Jiva Goswami with Narottam Das Thakur and Srinivas Acharya. His name was originally Duki Krishnadas, but when he was performing, he was such a great scholar, exalted in every way. But his greatest pleasure was menial service. With a broom, not the kind of brooms we have today, kind of the proud person's broom where you stand up and sweep. <laughs> this is the kind of broom where you have to get on your knees and sweep. Yes? So he would sweep the forests and the pathways of Braj Bhumi, especially in the area of Seva Kunj, on his knees with a broom every day, year after year. He was doing all his scholarly work, but such menial services. He offered menial service to Jiva Goswami, menial service to Lokanath Goswami, Bhugarbha Goswami, all the great devotees. But he wanted to render menial service to everyone, and ultimately to Sri Sri Radha Shamsundar by sweeping. It's a beautiful but long story. But one day he found while he was sweeping a magnificent golden bengal. Yes? And um, it was an ornament. This was, his, this was how Radharani was personally reciprocated with him. 
Lalita Saki came in, in disguise and said, did you find a golden ornament? It is my friend's. Please give it to me. And Shamananda Prabhu said, I would like to give it to her myself. <laughs> so by the power of Lalita Saki, who was Swarup Dhammadar Goswami and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela, she transformed him into his spiritual form. And she took him before as a manjari and took him before Srimati Radharani, who took that ornament and pushed it on his head and made a special tilak. And because he gave so much pleasure to Sri Radharani, Radharani gave him a new name. One of Radharani's names is Shama. Radha and Krishna is Shama Sham. She gave him the name Shama Ananda, one who gives us pleasure to Sri Radha. So when he when he came back to his form of Shamananda Pandit, he had this tilak that was there still. And the devotees were wondering, because sometimes Gaudiya Vaishnavas can be very strict about being bona fide. <laughs> what, what tilak is this? This, this is not proper tilak. Well, he couldn't just start telling everybody because devotees don't like to tell about their internal ecstasies. But he explained it to Jiva Goswami. And Jiva Goswami, he understood that this was his truth. But when Shamananda Pandit found out, I mean, I'm sorry, when Hridai Chaitanya found out in Orissa, He's hearing all rumors. Your disciple, he has a new name now. And he's wearing a different tilak than you gave him. He was very, very upset. He wasn't upset for himself. He wanted to save his disciple. Because Guru Aparad is the worst type of Vaishnava Aparad. And he, it was his duty to save his disciple. Was it Jiva Goswami who's giving him a new name? I sent him there to teach him. And now he's giving, is he getting new names now? Giving him new tilak? So he wanted to save his disciple. Now, Ridai Chaitanya was a disciple of Gauri Das Pandit. And previously also he was a very intimate associate of Gadadhar Pandit. And he was especially in the, the mood of a cowherd boy. Gauri Das Pandit is Subal in Krishna's Leela, his Param Guru. So when Hridai Chaitanya came, he came all the way to Vrindavan just to try to rescue his disciple from Aparad. And he challenged him, what is this new tilak and what kind of new name? I gave you name, Duki Krishna Das. Now you're Shamananda, what is this? And he, he was very humble. But ultimately, what happened is they tried to They said, if we can erase your tilak, because he, he, he had to tell his guru something of what happened. He said, if we can erase your tilak, we understand this is not true. So he actually went to and, and, and explained to Srimati Radharani what the situation was. And she said, I will protect you. Tell him if he can erase the tilak, then, you are, then that is proof you are not telling the truth. So the disciples were rubbing the tilak and rubbing the tilak, but every time they, it just came right back, and it came right back. And Rita Chaitanya, to protect his disciple, to show him the seriousness of an offense, he actually beat him. 
But then it was revealed to Hridai Chaitanya that it was actually causing pain to the Lord. And then his Hridai Chaitanya honored him with great joy and pride. It is a long story. But I'm not going to go very deep into it today. But a beautiful thing that happened is Jiva Goswami instructed Shamananda Pandit along with Srinivasacharya and Narottam Das Thakur to take the books of the Goswamis to Bengal to be copied and distributed. And in <clears throat> um, King Birambir in Bana Vishnupuram stole the books. And Shamananda Goswami was sent back to his native place to preach. Eventually, the king delivered the books, became a disciple of Srinivasacharya, and the entire kingdom did. So sometimes catastrophes are stepping stones to the greatest opportunities and blessings. And Shamananda Goswami in Orissa, he preached the message of Prema Bhakti and hundreds and thousands of people came to him. One of his disciples, Rasi Kananda, was, was bringing hundreds and hundreds of thousands of more people wonderful histories of this great Vaishnava. One in particular, Shamananda was doing Nam Sankirtan with his devotees. And there was a Mughal ruler named Sher Khan. He outlawed any public Hindu practices. And here they're playing Murdanga, Kartals, dancing. Oh, nonsense, what is this? He came with his soldiers, angry as fire, angry as fire. He said, if you ever do this again, if you ever do this again, I will break your drums, I will break your heads, I will prison, imprison you, torture you, never do this again. Now here's the ruler. The next day, there's Shamananda Goswami in the streets doing Nam Sankirtan with his devotees. <laughs> And he's charged at them. Sher Khan with his soldiers charged at them. It was going to be a bloody punishment. But seeing this, Shamananda started screaming out very loudly the holy names. And it just was so loud. It, even the king and everybody had to run away. I mean, the, lead, the, the, the ruler had to run away. It was just too much. It was unearthly. And then that night, Allah appeared to Shere Khan in a dream. <laughs> and told him, I have appeared in this age as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he has promoted this Nam Sankirtan movement, which is meant to spread love of God beyond all sectarian boundaries, and Sh Shamananda Goswami is my pure devotee, and you, are, you have attacked him? You have two choices. Either you die or you go and surrender to him and become his disciple. So the next day, Shamananda Goswami is out doing Nam Sankirtan and here comes <laughs> Sher Khan falls at his feet, tears in his eyes and surrenders his life. Today is also Hanuman Jayanti. I spoke very briefly because by popular demand uh, <laughs> we wanted to speak a few words about Hanumanji. Hanuman personifies bhakti, devotional service. 
in his qualities and his pastimes, he reveals the essential virtues that every devotee should strive for. His determination, his absolute loyalty, his willing to, to, to cross over all apparently impossible obstacles, and his total absorption in remembering Lord Ram and chanting the holy names. In Sri Ramayan, we first see the appearance of Hanumanji on the banks of a crystal clear lake called Pampas Rover. Previously, in Panchabati or Nasik, Ravana had abducted Sita in a most cowardly way. As a Chatriya, it would have been proper in those days to fight Ram. <laughs> but proper for a Rakshasha. Chatriya doesn't fight for somebody else's wife. But Rakshashas will do that. It's within their codes. But after hearing about Ram, he had another Rakshasha, Maricha, to disguise himself as that golden deer to allure Ram away. And then as Lord Ram shot the deer, he cried out, Lakshma, Ram, or Lakshman, Lakshman, help me, help me. And Sita forced Lakshman to go. When no one was around, that demon Ravana, he came disguised as a saintly person, knowing that Sita was very much inclined toward opening her heart and serving saintly people. Just see how deceiving Maya could be. In fact, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he said, in the age of Kali, the disciples of Kali sometimes even take the guise of devotees just to cheat people, especially to exploit them and destroy their faith. And the scriptures say that in the age of Kali, sometimes demons appear in families of Brahmins just to deceive us, get us to open our hearts to them and exploit. That was Ravana. As he was flying with Sita, Jatayu jumped forward to defend her, knowing he didn't have really a chance because of his old age, and he was defeated. But in the process, Jatayu did kill all Ravana's asses and his chariot and break his bow. All he had left was a sword to cut off his wings. Jataya was just too tired to continue the fight. So he was killed. But in a place called Kishkindakshetra, which is today in Karnataka, Sugriva and Hanuman and the others, they happened to see well, first they heard this beautiful sound of a helpless lady screaming out, O oh Ram, O oh Lakshman, help me, help me. O oh Ram, O oh Lakshman, help me, help me. 
And these Vanaras, monkey soldiers, looked up in the sky and there they saw a beautiful goddess in the grips of a mighty Rakshasha. What is this? She had some jewels. The jewels that were given to her by Anasuya on the banks of the Mandakini Ganga in Chitrakut. She is the wife of Atri Muni. And she threw down those jewels, hoping that when Ram would come there, they would show him those jewels and they would know which way. They could tell Ram which way she was going. Sugriva took those jewels and put them in the cave where he resided. Meanwhile, Sri Ramchandra was searching, 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 asking the trees and the deers and the birds and the sun and the moon and the stars and the river, the Godavari River. Have you seen Sita? One deer just kind of glanced in the southern direction, so he followed that. In his search, he came upon that massive um, personality named Kabanda, who tried to devour Ram and Lakshman. But Ram and Lakshman cut the arms off. And he said, I will tell you everything, just put my body on fire. <laughs> so they put his body on fire. And Kabanda, in his original form of a demigod, explained how he was cursed in this form. But he said, you will find your Sita. But the best way to do so is nearby is a lake called Pampa. And near that is the Rishyamukha mountain. Dwelling there is Sugriva. You should make allies with him and have him help you find Sita. <clears throat> so following Kabanda's direction, they came to Pampasrova. Beautiful, beautiful lake. And they found there a very old lady living in little caves and hut named Shabri. She was an ascetic sitting in meditation, dressed in deer skin. And when she saw Ram, she jumped up. She was so happy. She bowed down her head, her, her head at his lotus feet and offered him every type of service she had. All there was was some berries that were growing. And it is said that those berries, you don't know whether they're sweet or sour unless you taste them. And she definitely did not want to give anything bitter to Ram. So in her spontaneous affection, she would taste a little bit. And if they were sweet, she took it out of her mouth and gave it to Ram. If it was bitter, she put it aside. And Ram accepted. Patram pushpam palam toyam yome bhakta prayachchati. If you offer me leaf fruit <laughs> or a little water with love and devotion, I will accept it. Krishna does not accept the thing, he accepts the love in which it is offered or the purpose in which it is offered. Now, if you try worshiping the deity like that, you will definitely fall down <laughs> because you don't have that love and you don't have that necessity. You can other, other ways. <laughs> but Ram accepted her love. 
because her heart was totally simple. And Ram asked all about her. She was a disciple of Mantara Muni. And she said long before, she was always serving all the rishis who were his followers. But he, he, was, he was going to go back to Vaikuntha with all his disciples. But he told Shabari that you must, you must stay here because Ra Lord Ram, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, will come here in the future. And you must be here to serve him. So she said, Sri Ram, in the absence of my Gurudev, on his order, I have been waiting here, doing severe tapasya, year after year after year, just meditating on your coming, and now you have come. She served him in every way possible, and then asked his permission I have, I have stayed in this world for the purpose I was allotted. Now let me join my guru and ser serve him and all the rishis in the spiritual world once again. And Ram gave his blessings. And she went to the sacred fire and sat in meditation and her body was consumed by fire. And then her celestial spiritual form appeared. Youthful, beautiful, decorated with jewels. And with Ram's blessings, she went back home, back to Godhead. Meanwhile, from up in the Rishyamukha mountain, Sugriva, he has spies all around because his elder brother Bali wants to kill him. So he had guards all around. It was the only safe place that Bali could not go is in the hermitage of this Rishi because he was cursed to die if he would ever go there. So Griva, when he looked down and he saw Ram and Lakshman, they looked very young and very powerful. He called Hanumanji, said, I'm sure this must be two powerful warriors sent by Bali to kill me. I want you to go down in the disguise of a Brahmin mendicant and find out exactly who they are. So Hanumanji, who was given powers when he was young, could change his form according to his desire. And he became a nice little young Brahmin mendicant and he jumped down and he met with Sri Ram and Lakshman. As soon as he saw Ramchandra, something happened. The spontaneous ecstatic love was awakening in his heart. But he didn't understand exactly why. So he asked, Actually, first of all, because that love was, that, well, that love was f so much, he couldn't keep his secret anymore. He said, I am Hanuman. <laughs> I, am the, I am the servant of Sugriva, and I've come to find out who you are. <laughs> and Lakshman told him that this is my brother Ram, the son of Dasarat, and told the story of his birth in Ayodhya and his, um, his marriage to Sita 
And then he talked about the exile due to the influence of Kaikei and how Ravana had stolen Sita and he was searching. Hanuman, he had to resume his original form. He said, why didn't I recognize you, Ram? You were the Lord of my life since my earliest childhood. The Lord explained, Krishna tells in Gita, Yeyatam mampapadyante tams tatayvapajamyam. As, as you approach the Lord, the Lord reciprocates accordingly. Krishna says in Gita, if you want to cheat God, God will cheat you. And who's a better cheater? You or God? <laughs> so who's going to win? He's the supreme at everything. So if you, if someone assumes a false identity, then the Lord covers himself. If we accept our real role, our true role, Jivera Swarupoy, Krishna Das, as the eternal servants of the Lord, if that's actually how we identify ourselves, then the Lord reveals Himself. So Hanumanji, he said, when, the, when, when Lakshman explained about Kabanda saying we should come here and make allies with Sugriva, Hanumanji said, I am his messenger, I am his servant. And then he resumed a pretty big Hanuman form. And he said, get on my, jump on my shoulders, and I will take you to Sugriva. So Ram and Lakshman got on his shoulders and he held them and leaped to the top of the Rishish Mukha mountain. So Griva said, I want to help you. But the problem is, how can I help you? I can't leave this mountain. And he explained the reason. That long ago, a, an asura, a demon named Dundubi, attacked. It was very powerful. But Sugriva was also very powerful. I mean, Bali. Bali was very powerful. So he fought with that demon. Fought with that demon very good. And he killed the demon. And then just to show his power, he threw it. This gigantic, gigantic Rakshasha-like demon went flying through the air and it landed right in this Matungo Rishi's ashram where he was performing yagya with his disciples. And it just, poof! And blood splashed on everybody. So the sage cursed, whoever has defiled my yagya in this way and my ashram, if that person ever comes in this area, he will die. So later on, some other demon attacked and Bali was fighting him and the demon went into a cave and Bali and his younger brother Sukriva went to the cave and Bali said, you wait outside the cave, I'm going in. And he went in. And he was there for a long time, hour after hour after hour, for days. Sugriva's waiting. Where's my brother? And finally he hears this horrible scream and blood flows out. And he was convinced my brother's dead. But I should keep that demon in the cave. So he put a big rock and put it in front of the cave to block the entrance. And then he went down and became the king. But there was a problem. <laughs> it was the demon that, it was the demon that was killed. And Bali had a hard time moving that rock. And when he came out, he saw Sugriva enjoying all the pleasures of his throne. Arivo. <laughs> So Bali attacked him and they started fighting. And Sugriva had to run away because Bali was too strong. And the only way he could run was Rishyumukha Mountain. 
And Hanuman and his, and his allies all came with him. And they were living in exile. So Griva said, if you can help me overcome Bali, I can help you find Sita. And Ram said, there is no problem. I will kill Bali with my arrows and you will be the king. After all, Bali has taken your wife. He's taken your wife. This is a very illegal activity. It is the proper justice. Sugriva so said, Bali is very strong. How do I know you can do it? There were seven tall trees. Yes? Very big, wide trees. And Lord Ramchandra, with an arrow, <laughs> it went through all those trees, went around the whole universe, went into the ground, came out and into his quiver. Bali was impressed. I mean, Sugriva. Sugriva was impressed. And then Ram threw Dundubi, right? He threw the, the dead long distance. Huh? 80 miles he threw. Him. So then Sugriva comes right into the kingdom, something he would never dare to do. He said, Bali, you. Rascal, you coward. <laughs> You've been hiding from me all these days. Now I've come to fight with you. Stand before me if you dare. Bali. <laughs> what is this? He was raging mad, being insulted, and he came out to fight. It was a very, very serious fight. But after some time, Sugriva was losing. <laughs> and he was waiting for Ram to do something. <laughs> and fighting, fighting, and he was on, practically on the verge of being killed. And Ram didn't do anything. So finally, somehow or other, Sugriva just s squirmed out from Bali's grips and ran away. <laughs> and ran back to Rishubuka Mountain. <laughs> But Bali couldn't come. And he said, Ram, what happened? <laughs> Actually, it's important. Before this fight, they solemnized their alliance. They both sat. Hanumanji, who was a great priest as well, he was everything. Whatever way service needed to be done, he was the best. So he started a sacred fire, he was the priest, and Ram and Sugriva sat at the fire together, and they both made vows to be allies. Ram to help overcome Bali, and Sugriva to help find Sita. They, were, they took vows before the sacred fire, and the priest, Hanuman, that they would be lifelong loyal to each other. <laughs> 